still the song, the person. Still the song. <laughs> but you know what? I'm, I'll give you one. Okay, in my darkest hour, I love that song. I always that's have. A, yeah, it was one of the first songs I was introduced to Megadeth. Although I didn't know it was a Megadeth song at the time. They used to play it at the Club War before the bands would go on. Um, and you know, it's a really long song, so it would give them enough time to get everything set up and the lights and everybody get to get into place. But the thing that I love about it that kind of speaks to me is that um, it's it has just everything. It's epic. You know, it starts out big and wide, then it just crashes. It becomes this big orchestrated thing, and then it thrashes. You know, so it's, it's to me, it's the perfect thing in this song. Well, for, I, I'm thinking still, but I would say Hangar 18 is a because of the the opening track for every live show for almost seven years now. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's always the, the opening track. Oh, wow, that's cool. And then, uh, yeah, it's just it's always this. You're like the season into yeah. the set. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. People. Very exciting. I think that was the opening track. Mm -hmm. Marty was in the band. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you know. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Very good. Yeah. I remember we started with Holy Wars a couple times. And That's right, yeah. It's like, how something. the hell did you, you know? That's a tough track to start. That's a tough yeah, one, too. It's, yeah. it's the very tough track. track. I remember more of that intro music. We always had the coolest intro. Yeah. There was one Shut thing. Up, be happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that at the beginning of the pandemic. I'm like, I heard this kind of talk before we used to go on stage. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. That and um, Agent Orange from uh, Apocalypse Now. Right. And 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 um, Exodus, the theme from oh, Exodus. Right. Yeah. 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 As a Jewish guy, we use this theme from Exodus, so it's like this is a big deal. I can bring my my grandparents to the show. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just like grand piece of music and there was always a lot of thought going into the intro music and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I don't yeah. know what you guys are using now. Uh, we used a portion of a song called The Prince of Darkness. Oh. When I joined Megadeth I thought um, these guys dress like grown-ups, you know what I mean? Because like at that time heavy metal bands it was like a denim jacket and like twisted sister patches and stuff like that and I'm like these guys look like they're wearing real clothes and and um, also not conforming to the heavy metal while still playing pretty much the ultimate heavy metal they don't look like the heavy metal that was already out there I always remember we are always kind of clothes conscious mm -hmm. what's he wearing what of course uh, Dirk and I have coordinated our clothes <laughs> <laughs> we were always, that was very unique to me at the time because mm -hmm. um, I was kind of impressed with that. They looked like, you know, well, maybe they're a heavy metal band, maybe they're like Led Zeppelin or Rolling Stones or something like that, or maybe they're doing some other kind of job that looks like stand up kind of people, you know what I mean? Which is kind of probably would set us apart and probably did well for us in places like Japan where image, of course heavy metal is important, but image, they look at the image and they really see into that this guy's taking care of himself, or this guy's, you know, spends money or time on his clothes and outfits and stuff like that, and I always got that from Megadeth, and it probably if I'd never been in Megadeth, I'd still look like I was in the Ramones or something. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, I don't tell them what to wear, but I, we talk about what we're wearing, and going to photo shoot sometimes, because they all pick out their clothes and sometimes we'll be wearing the same kind of thing and we'll just make sure, or, you know, if it's indoors, no sunglasses, if outdoors, sunglasses or whatever, just, you know, so that we're all kind of looking like we're on the same journey together, you know. If one of us is standing outside and it's dark and you got sunglasses on, it's like, you know, it doesn't look like you're, you're I, I guess it doesn't look like you're all together. You know, everybody's wearing sunglasses, everybody's uh, wearing pants, one guy's got shorts on. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. You know, the whole the whole camouflage short thing, um, I, I just could, uh, I, I don't think I could handle it if uh, we dressed like that. Because it's, it, to me, it just, you know, yeah, like what you said, in Michigan, it's just in this, I think, Taking care of yourself and looking smart is important, you know, because you want people in the audience to look at you and say, "I want to be you." Yeah, these are the kind of things I, you know, I miss them, man. Dave would come up with these gems, Sorry. and and they come out, you know, and um, they will flood back into my mind. But I just remember 
I, I remember some really good ones, man. Like, the better you feel about yourself naked, the better you're going to play. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I sort of remember, maybe. Nice line, I said. She said, that's the type of thing. I mean, I think it was when we were like, you were really into karate and in martial arts and stuff. And there was one period of time where I very foolishly tried to try it myself. And remember we had a trainer out on the road and we were all in different kind of, different levels of trying karate things. I think I got this far and that was the end. But like, that time, a lot of like little catchphrases come out, and sometimes they pack, they get your ear. Maybe the trainer said that if you if you look good about if you look good if you feel you look good, you're gonna play better, you're gonna perform better. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe it was probably you, but it might have been the trainer or somebody like that. And there was like health people around, and we were really trying. You're talking to... about Mark Para. Oh my God, the name. Uh, that probably yeah. So uh, <laughs> I don't think he's smart enough to have said that. I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thought you were going to tell the story about when we did a keto over here. Do you remember that? We came over here and we did an Aikido demo and the guy cracked you over the head with a sword. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. I remember us doing an Aikido, Aikido thing. Remember we had big black billowing pants on and a nice white top. I had my black belt and they gave you a white belt and then we went out there and the guy went whack and hit you on the head and I fucking died livid and, and then the guy goes okay show me some of your style and I almost broke his arm and the guy I he says too much force too much force and I said you ask me what my style is this is my style don't hit my friend again that's what he left thank you yeah I was pissed and speaking of Japanese stuff a lot of I don't think I've ever told this story in Japan but the first time I ever ate sushi was because of Dave. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, he's like, dude, you're all into this, all this Japanese stuff, but you don't eat sushi. That's that's so lame, dude. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I tried it once and it was just so, it was gross. It was like, no, you got to go to a good place. Because one time when you try something and it's not right, you never want to try it again. But, but he took me out to a place called Sushi on Sunset, if you remember that place. I thought it was Teru Sushi. We used to go there, but I remember specifically the first place that you took me. It was just the both of us. Uh -huh. Sushi on Sunset. Okay. And he's like... Oh, I remember that place by the strip joint? Yes. The Tropicana, whatever yeah, that's called? Yeah, where, where all those tattoo places yeah. and the, those gigs are. Mm -hmm. And he took me there, treated me to a nice sushi, and I'm like, this is great. This is great. I, I got it. So now it's my favorite food even still now, but... Can you imagine living here? Oh, I'm kind of not into sushi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had sushi last night? After yeah, the show? yeah, after the show, yeah. Oh my god. What's your favorite sushi? Any. Any? Any. That's cool. Yeah. Tuna, salmon. He likes fugu. <laughs> What's that? He likes fugu. Fugu? <laughs> No, I'm vegan, so I, I, only, I only eat certain types, you know, obviously. He likes the sea cucumber. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Rock Fushima! Hell yeah! Action! Mikado e Yoko. Hi, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, ダンクリーダムでございます。フリーダムの語源でこのなんかシノビシリーズみたいな色合いのサスケっていう色のフリーダムを使ってます。結構渋い色だし、木目がそうです。木目で、マットの手刻りがあるっていうデザインになってます。
より支えるっていうのができるのがボイムですっていう感じですなるほどでちょっと後ろにあるアンプもお願いします、はい、こちらは借りたものなので詳しくは分かりませんはいでもかっこいい音がしますはいいい感じですか<笑>ツアーで使いたいぐらいなそうですねすっごくいい感じですあこう普段イヤモニしてるのであんまりこうアンプの直の音っていうのは聞こえにくいんですけどそれでも体でこう振動で感じるような力強い音がしますおそして足元にドーンとこうラインシックスがはい、ラインシックスのヒーリックス LT を使ってますはいなんか前ちょっとネットで見た情報だと結構あのアナログつないで使ってたタイプなのかなと思ってたんですけど、はいはいはいはい、デジタルも使う,そうです、ね、なんかラブバイツに入ってよりいろんな音作りを求められるというか、はい、コーラスだったりとかもうブインブインに歪ませたりとかいろんな音作りが求められるようになったのでよりたくさんの音をこの1台で出したいなと思ってデジタルのこういったマルチのやつを使うようになりましたなるほどあのアルバムタイトルが「ジャッジメント・デイ」じゃないですかそうですねなんか審判の日みたいな、はいはい、で多分あのファミちゃんが今審判というかジャッジされてる側じゃないですかそうですねでもあのファミちゃんからメンバーをジャッジするっていうかメンバーがすごいこ,この人これがすごいなみたいな音的なものであったら教えてください、はいはい、あもうジャッジするどころじゃなくもうその場にいるだけでもうわーってなるぐらいかっこよくてもう特にあの春菜さんのドラムに関して音なんですけどドラムの音に関してこんなにシンバルたくさんあるじゃないですか曲の中でこのシンバルだけとかじゃなくてその音の場所音域によっていろんなシンバルをこうこう巧みに使い分けていてもうそれがもうぶっ刺さりましたなるほどねそうだ一番リズム体がね、はい、仲良くしないといいバンドが生まれないですもんね,ね、はい、ツインギターと一緒にやったことはありますあんまりなかったです入ってみてどうですかわあそうですねなんかとにかくギターソロの時になんかこうお二人前に出て演奏されるんですけどなんか,かっこよすぎて演奏しながらそっち見ちゃうみたいな<笑>そういう状況になってますはいだからもううわーって演奏されてるのをもう思わず見ちゃうような魅力があるなと思いますツアーが夏から始まりますけど意気込みを教えてください夏のツアーはもう今回のライブで経験を1詰めたのでも,うもっともっとパワーアップしてパワーアップして結果が切れる直前までアドレナリン出して頑張っていきたいと思いますよろしくお願いします,お願いしますそれまでにあのアルバムでこうベース的にこの曲頑張ったから聴いとけよみたいな、はい、今回のアルバムで一番推し曲は「ウィキッド・ウィッチ」ですこれまでずっとスラップバックやってたんですけど、はい、なんかその中で「ウィキッド・ウィッチ」はギャロップのリズムで3本指で刻んでいくんですけど、はい、その指弾きの楽しさみたいなのが全面に現れてる曲だから好きって感じですじゃあ新たな魅力を知った曲みたいな新たな指弾きの魅力を知りました指弾き系で尊敬するベーシストとかいますわあ具体的にはあんまりいないんですけどプレイヤー全員好きっていう感じでやってますなんか将来どんなこうラブバイツを通ってどういうベーシストになりたいとかありますいやーまあとにかく一目見て一瞬でわかるサウンドのかっこよさを出していきたいと思いますヘルヤーファミさんのベース見てもらいました。何ですかあれもう工芸品ですね。うん、箱根のこう,こう寄せ木細工みたいなこう味がありますね。そしてそれに反してあのフェリックスのエフェクターすごいですね。何度も何度もオーディションを重ねそして選ばれた最高のメンバーファミさん。こうご期待。ラブバイツこの未来へ続くこの栄光の道を一緒に応援していきましょうボーカルのあさみさんも今度ぜひミカドに来てもらいたいですな。